our uh, Catholic liturgical tradition, only bishops are allowed to sit when they preach. I'm not being presumptuous, it's just that in my body there's a, a bit of a civil war happening that doesn't allow me to, uh, to stand for too long. Oh dear friends, it's upon us again, the football season. Believe the Bulldogs are playing on the day or tomorrow in one of these pre-season things. And the year being 2024 is certainly going to be the year of the Bulldogs. It's been almost uh, 10 years, I think, since we won. 40 years, I think. Or even 20 years, I think, since we won a, a premiership. But the season begins with a great amount of preparation. As you know, as good as the players are, they have to go through a certain preparation period, a certain ritual of exercise, a certain ritual of diets, to say no to certain things and to say yes to others. And that's simply for them to be better players, more sophisticated players, people whose mind are focused on the game, and on winning the premiership and doing the best they can for the team to which they belong. We know what happens when players tend to break that regimen and that routine. The papers are full. League players who have perhaps made the wrong decisions, even though they have been asked to live a certain way. If they don't follow that routine, something happens. Not only do they not live to their full potential, but also they let their team down. They let their players down. They let their supporters down. So it's important for them to be as highly trained as possible. What we begin today, dear friends, is our pre-season. Our pre-season is the great celebration of Easter. The great celebration of new life, where we know that suffering, death, does not overcome us. But that Jesus Christ, with death and resurrection, has won new life for us. But there's a catch to that. We need to believe in that. We need to live that. We need to repent from our wrongdoing. We need to repent from our selfishness. To be more Christ-like, as Paul reminds us in our second reading today, to be ambassadors for Christ. It's interesting in the Gospel today that as Jesus gives us this very incredible passage from the Sermon of the Mount, he doesn't begin with an invitation. He begins with a warning. Do not parade your good deeds before others. Today as we begin Lent, Jesus tells us in the Gospel that there are three things that we need to look at. Three important things in the spiritual life that can allow us to be closer to God and closer to each other. And I give this message to all of you, irrespective of your religious background, because Lent becomes a time, not only for Catholics to be better, but for everyone who's been created in the image of God to do something about their lives and to be a better person. To say at the end of the 40 days, yes, I've struggled. Yes, I found it difficult. But through prayer, almsgiving and fasting, I've achieved something. These three things bring us closer to God. Prayer is important in our relationship with God. But dear friends, without prayer, I would not have gone over or have not gone through the last three or four months. Prayer becomes the stability of our lives, of our relationship with God. Think of the relationships you have with people, those closest to you. If you never communicated with them, if you never spoke to them, if you never shared with them your deepest thoughts, how would that relationship grow deeper? 
it would, it would fade away. So too it is with God. We need to find time for God. So maybe this Lent will be a time perhaps to give up for a while our electronic media. Even though on the media there are certain great websites that allow us to pray and pray deeply. But if we can use that in order to get closer to God in prayer, to tell God what's in our hearts, to ask God for the strength to truly be his ambassadors to the world. So that's the first thing. Fasting became a great thing in our Christian spirituality. When I was your age, some 56 years ago, fasting was simply giving up lollies, ice cream, all those good things that you enjoy, all those things that bring kilos to your waistline. But I truly believe that in least the church is asking us for a broader interpretation of fasting. Not only to fast from food, as a recognition that there are people in our world who are struggling with the basic elements of life, but to fast from gossip, to fast from bullying, to fast from giving the evil word, to fast from making life difficult for other people. As Joel reminds us in our first reading, that what God wants is a broken, contrite heart. This is the essence of what it is to be an ambassador for Christ. So maybe as we consider this element of fasting, we could consider the fact that we need to abstain from those elements that cause problems and issues to other people. Gossiping, fighting, bullying, making life difficult for other people. And that's where the third element comes in. Arms giving. I remember when I was in primary school, sister, whatever her name was, talked about arms giving. I had this image of ripping off my arms and giving my arms to people. But it's arms giving from the point of giving something of myself to others. After this Eucharist, we'll have the launching of Project Compassion. That's a very practical way in which to give up something that we have something of our surplus to give to people in need. But also arms giving reminds us that we need to give of ourselves when we pray and pray well, when we fast and fast well, then we're in a position where we can recognise the needs of those people around us. And who amongst us hasn't got some needs that need to be attended by someone close to us? someone who we know or someone who could be a complete stranger. So dear friends, I place it before you. As Paul reminds us, now is the time. Now is the time for salvation. Now is the time to put our lives at rights with God and with others. To look at those three elements, fasting, prayer, and of asking. Maybe to take one each week and to see how we can better pray how we can better fast not only in material things but also in our attitude and in arms giving how we can be a source of Christian help to other people but dear friends this is the call I put before you irrespective of your religious background irrespective of whether you believe in God or not these elements will not only make you a better person, but also your friends, your family, school, and our society in need. So it's an important time, these 40 days. Let's not waste it. At the end of these 40 days of leave, may we truly say, yes, Lord, I've tried. I've achieved with your grace to become a better person. Because when we go back to our football analogy, what can stop a very good player from becoming a better player? And that is a sense of pride. To say to themselves, no one can teach me any better. I know it all. Even the coach, good as they are, can teach me nothing because I know it all. 
His sense of pride is the beginning of sinfulness. And pride is the first thing we need to put at ease and on the sidewalk. To say to the Lord, yes, Lord, you've granted me my image, your image, but I do need your help, your grace, your strength, in order to truly be your ambassador in the world. My dear friends, let us not take it deep lightly. Let us take it as an opportunity to grow deeper, closer to God and to each other, to prayer, to fasting, to answer. May we assist each other as we begin this desert journey, this Lenten sojourn, to truly become better persons, to truly become the ambassadors of Jesus Christ. May the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.